Welcome to the first Crossbow Appreciation Month video for August 2019. A couple of years ago on this YouTube channel, I did a video about whether you should aim low when aiming out of your tree stand. This video is a follow-up to that. Should you aim high when aiming out of your tree stand? That's this episode of Death by Bungee. Boy, it is a muggy day here in northeastern Pennsylvania. I got to tell you what, you're going to be seeing me sweat on these videos. I'm doing a handful of videos here. I've got it all set up where I can shoot this. You can see my deer target in the background. We're going to be using that. And I've got a tree stand set right up here in the grove with all these bugs and all this muggy weather and everything else. So hopefully this will go smoothly. This is an important video. I get this question all the time from people about how to aim from a tree stand. And I know that given the fact that my video about whether you should aim low from a tree stand is one of my most watched videos over 80,000 views at the time of the making of this video pretty impressed with that and i also have another video about where do you aim on a deer that video has got over 100,000 views right now so i know that this is an important topic the folks on the death by bungee group page on facebook which is a new page and if you haven't joined it yet you should make very good points and ask very good questions about this topic in fact they summed it up so nicely i almost don't need to do a video on it Patrick McHugh posted, does anyone find shooting from elevation changes shot placement? Then he goes on to say, in his experience, he sighted in at 20 yards, and then, like a redneck, he <laughs> took a few shots out of his bedroom window. Everything seems to hit the bullseye the same. I think that makes a very good point, and I think it's consistent with what I'm going to tell you here. It really does not make much difference. Any significant difference can be detected with a proper rangefinder. That sums up this video nicely. The first thing we should talk about is angle of elevation and angle of declination, right? We talked about that in that previous video. Go and watch that video if you haven't already. But essentially what I'm talking about, when you're aiming from a tree stand, you're aiming from an elevated position. Now, we're, if our deer is down here, we are shooting from here down to where the deer is, right? That is an angle of declination. It's a downhill shot going to that deer. Gravity, however, only affects the flight of your arrow on a horizontal plane. So really what matters is not the distance, the actual distance between you up here and that deer down here. That's not what matters. What matters actually is the distance between the horizontal distance, the distance from the base of your tree, basically, to the deer. Robert Jr. makes out a very good point on our Death by Bungee group page. Wouldn't the range finders with the arc take care of this? And he sees no difference either elevated or standing on the ground at 30 yards. A new modern rangefinder will calculate that distance for you. It'll calculate both distances, the distance from up here down to the deer. It'll also calculate that angle, and it will also calculate the horizontal distance. So what we're going to be looking for on these new rangefinders, however, is that shoot as distance, that horizontal distance to the target. It really doesn't matter if this distance up here is like 60 yards and this distance is 20 yards. That's a real exaggeration. You won't find that kind of angle. But if you did, the real distance is 20 yards, not 60. Okay, we're really only going to be shooting as though it's 20 yards. If you aim at 60, you're going to be lifting up the barrel of that crossbow so high you're going to shoot right over the deer. Gary Rose goes on on our Facebook page on the Death by Bungee group page, makes a very good point that shooting up or down you sight for the horizontal distance to the target, not the distance of the angle to the target. In other words, you're using the shoot as distance on your rangefinder, not the overall distance to the target. This rangefinder, the Bushnell 1000 Arc DX, it is a Great rangefinders were great for me. I'm not sponsored by Bushnell, not suggesting this is the rangefinder for you, but the price was right and it's worked well. I've used it for several seasons, very happy with it. One thing that it does have is the ARC, and that's the important thing that I'm talking about with these rangefinders. What that does is it calculates, it'll recognize when you're in a tree stand, when you're angling down at your target, it will recognize that angle, tell you what that angle is, and then calculate the distance on a horizontal plane. So it does that math for you. Now, usually this isn't a big deal. Usually if you're 20 yards away, according to the diagonal elevation, 
you're probably only going to be about 19 yards away horizontally. So it's usually not going to make a really big difference. But it's important to know, and it takes all that guesswork out and that pretending out when you're aiming from a tree stand. The most important thing to take into account when you are aiming out of a tree stand is that we're con taking into consideration the deer's vitals. We're not aiming at a foam target and a little dot on the side of the target. We're trying to pass all the way through that target, all the way through that animal, and go all the way through those vitals. It requires you to think three-dimensionally, to actually think about that deer in terms of being a 3D target. So practice thinking that way ahead of time. Use a life-like target if you can, and then examine your arrow path, examine the way those arrows impact that target, and make sure that if that was a real animal, a real hunting situation, that you believe that arrow would pass all the way through those vitals. That's really the most important reason to be thinking in terms of those angles. That's really the most important reason and the only reason, in my opinion, to be aiming a little bit high from a tree stand so that your entrance wound can be a little bit higher on the side toward you, a little lower exit wound on the far side passing through that deer's vitals. That's the most important thing. That's the reason we might want to aim a little bit high from a tree stand. Now the other video, I kind of titled it Aim Low, Miss Low, and maybe we should title this video Aim High, Miss High. Is that the same thing? And it's not really the same thing. Now, again, taking into account your angle of declination, your angle of elevation, all that stuff, you really just want to aim for where you want the arrow to make contact. Your point of aim and your point of impact should be the same. So we're going to aim at a spot on our deer or our target where we want the arrow to make contact. Marshall Robinson on our Death by Bungie Facebook group page summed it up nicely that the only thing that changes is his point of aim. The point where the crosshair is, is where it hits. And what he's saying there is what the point that I'm trying to make, he makes it very succinctly, very nicely, that your point of aim should be the same as your point of impact. And hopefully they're the same thing, both when you are target shooting and when you are hunting. The only thing that really you are going to change is your point of aim. Do you want to aim a little bit higher to compensate for the angle that that arrow will penetrate the vitals? That is the only question you need to take into account. One thing we really got to point out here too is don't lose sight of the fact that when you are shooting your crossbow, when you're shooting at your deer, you are really lobbing those arrows. We're not really shooting them. That's not a straight shot like a bullet might be. You know, even there's an arc to even to bullets. But with a crossbow, we're really kind of lobbing them. Even your faster crossbows, even your 400 feet per second, 450 feet per second crossbows still are lobbying the arrow. They have an arc to them. And you can look that up on various websites to see how much of an arc that is. But it's important to take that into account. On a close-in shot, you're up in the tree stand, the deer's down here, you might not have much of an arc. It might be a pretty flat shot to that deer. But if you extend that shot out, you have more of an arc. The farther, and I don't care what crossbow you're using, none of them shoot flat out to 40 yards. That's BS. Don't listen to anybody that tells you otherwise. But the reality is you have a real arc to your shot. And if you're shooting a 40-yard shot, 30 or 40-yard shot from a tree stand, you're going to have more of an arc than you would at 20. So it's important to keep that in mind. And the reason I bring that up is your point of aim has to take that into account. When you shoot your crossbow at a 30 yard or 40 yard away target, there's quite a bit of arc to that. And that arrow is going to come down on your target. It's not going to go straight at your target. It's going to come down at your target. Now it's not a great difference, but it's enough to keep in mind. I guess what I'm saying and what I think it means for this video is simply that if you've got a closer in shot like a 10 yard or a 20 yard shot, which is a great shot for a crossbow, a shot like that, aim a little bit high so that the arrow goes in and then it exits out the other side of that deer and it hits both lungs and you get a, a nice pass through on both lungs, all that sort of thing. And lastly, here we're thinking three dimensional. We want to hit both lungs, if at all possible, on those broadside shots. But we want to make sure we get under that shoulder blade. I have talked in the past about the bungee triangle. It's something I just made up when I was making a video once, but it, it really is something that I have looked for sort of uh, based on my experience when shooting deer with a crossbow now, heading into my 10th season with a crossbow. I'll have you know, quite proud of that. 10 years with a crossbow for a guy that grew up in Pennsylvania hunting deer with a rifle, that's kind of a big deal. So the 10th season heading up in here, 30 deer on the ground, and we'll be heading into this pretty good track record for, like I said, you know, so I'm pretty excited about that. 
Got a lot planned for this 2019-2020 hunting season. So stick around here with Death by Bungie so you can catch up with all that stuff as well. But keeping in mind, we don't want to shoot too high because we don't want to hit that shoulder blade. Crossbows have a hard time penetrating that shoulder blade. Some of your newer, faster ones with a lot of front of center heavy arrows might be able to do that, but that's not something you want to take for granted. That is something you want to avoid. You want good, accurate, healthy shots, broadside shots, hit both lungs, that deer will not go far. That's your high percentage shot. That's what we're looking for. So to summarize here, should you aim a little bit high out of a tree stand? Yes, that doesn't mean that you pick a spot and then aim a little bit above that. That's not what that means. That means you think ahead of time about what you want to do, where you want your point of aim to be on that deer based on various distances. Stay a little bit below that uh, shoulder blade. Watch out for that. Don't go too high for that reason. Remember that accuracy is number one in crossbow hunting. And until next time, all hail Bungie. Okay. I get tons of questions. Well, let's start out with the intro. Should you, okay. A couple of years ago, I did a video about whether you should aim. You can see my deer target in the background. We're gonna be using that. And I've got a tree stand set right up here in the grove with all these bugs and all this muggy weather. Increase the chance of just hitting one of those lungs. The birds, I don't know if they're agreeing with me or disagreeing with me, but they're, or disagreeing with each other, but say that again. On those longer shots, you have a greater stand. Check that video out if you haven't already. Let's get a towel.